everybody. I'm Mike Schluter, and welcome. We're out here today getting some close-up macro shots of some flowers. This happens to be a small apple tree with a beautiful little blossom on it. But this works for any kind of flower close-up photography. We've got some beautiful natural light now as we have this cloud cover over us, giving us nice soft light. I'm using a close-up filter by Nikon on my 28 to 70 lens that gives me a nice close uh, focusing capability. You can use a lot of different options to do this type of work, meaning an actual macro lens, extension tubes, and or the close-up filters. I tend to use the filters. They're light, inexpensive, high quality. I can take them with me in my pack easily when I'm out hiking and coming photographing a wide variety of subjects. And if I find some close-up work, they're there at hand easily without dragging a lot of equipment along. We've got great conditions now, but a lot of times we're in the middle of the day. You'd be out here, the sun would be shining bright. I also take along a couple pieces of typical printer paper. Works terrific for not only cutting off hard sunlight to put your flower in a nice soft light, but it's translucent enough that it almost works like a big a soft box, some type of a diffusion panel to let some of the light transmit through and bathe the light and saw bathe the flower in nice soft light. Also, uh, sometimes on it, since it's a little overcast, depending upon how overcast it is, I also take a small piece of crumpled up aluminum foil, typical kitchen uh, item, that I take that really adds a soft but yet sparkle to the, to the flower as well. And you can hold that, and, and as you do this, you'll become more accustomed. You'll see the subtle changes in, in how it directs the light on there. It makes quite a difference, more so than your eye can see many times as you're doing it. But sometimes I'll use that to just kind of add some punch to the to the to an otherwise flat, too flatly lit um, flower. So and I'll shoot a couple like that. I shoot in manual mode most of the time with a wide aperture like f4 to blur the background and keep emphasis on just a portion of the flower. Focus is critical. Make sure you're focused on the part of the flower that you want to really grab the viewer's attention. I shoot in full manual mode, I pick my aperture for the depth of field I want, and then I adjust my shutter speed to get a proper exposure. I use a very low ISO, typically 100 or 200. Uh, I would recommend capturing RAW and high-res JPEG, large fine JPEG, and that way you have the best of both file types for post-processing, whatever your workflow tends to be. Tripod's essential, cable release is essential. I'm on uh, commercially made ground cover, but you can use a, a trash bag or anything because typically you're on the ground and it'll keep your knees clean and you can easily set your equipment filters, whatever, right there in front of you and keep them off the wet, damp ground. One other final tip, sometimes if you're out, uh, in the morning you usually have dew on the flowers, which is a great thing to have. Other times in the middle of the day, like now, you don't. I take a small uh, spritzer bottle you can throw in your pack with some water or a water glycerin mix. And you can then, after you shoot the shots like we've done now, that uh, do not have any dew on them, you can simulate dew. Be cautious. Of course, you don't spray this into your lens. We're already set up here. So I'm just going to kind of shield my lens. Now I'm just going to give it a quick little spritz. There we go. Okay. And that's all there is to it. And then I'll go ahead and uh, check composition of focus. Beautiful. I can see those water droplets. The light looks great. So we're going to go ahead and make a couple exposures. Check our LCD here. Exposures look dynamite. A couple of things you can also do. Once again, add a little bit of that sparkle with your reflector. Throw something. Play with it. Throw this behind for a different colored background. You never know what that might look like. It looks, it's out of focus. It looks terrific. It looks like a studio shot. Possibly uh, something in black you have anything. Uh, this is just the bag that the ground cloth came in. We don't need a bit anything big. Uh, this there oh it's great. I love that right there. Beautiful. These are gonna be terrific. within a matter of minutes, uh, five to six different variations on this flower. And of course, you can change your composition and so forth as you go as well. I like to kind of get about a 45 degree angle usually on the flower. It looks down into it, but not too much of an aerial perspective. But don't be afraid to try different things. I hope these tips help you with your flower photography. Get out this spring, have some fun with it, and enjoy just being out in the beautiful, great outdoors. 
I'm Mike Schluter, and thanks again for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time.